Hi, I'm Alexandra Przegalinska. And I'm Darush Jelinek. We're both advisors to Campus AI. And today we wanted to talk about something quite disturbing. Yeah, indeed. Uh, many of you might have heard about uh, a recent case uh, where a 14-year-old boy uh, committed suicide after uh, a year or two conversations with uh, an AI character, generated character. Um, I think it was the character that was uh, sort of uh, an emanation of Daenerys Targaryen uh, from the Game of Thrones and the boy had very intense contact with uh, that avatar um, and did discuss um, his mental state also with the avatar but unfortunately the avatar never decided to suggest to him that he should seek help and yeah, yeah. My, my understanding is it's even <clears throat> worse uh, if I recall correctly the avatar on occasion was replying to uh, what the boy was saying uh, in a way that was not discouraging him from thoughts about afterlife, you know, saying to, to a 14-year-old boy who thinks about suicide, yeah, we'll see each other in afterlife, is probably not exactly what we would like to see in the machine. Yeah, I think it's very disturbing because actually these sorts of products are uh, targeting children, uh, minors, teenagers, people in essentially very volatile um, period of their life. Uh, without many filters, without regulations really of any sort. And I believe the company that did uh, create these sets of avatars, actually they intentionally wanted these avatars to keep their role throughout the whole conversation. Uh, and so if there was an intervention now, I mean, let's stop this conversation and you should, uh, you know, seek a therapy or, or help that would, uh, well, create a situation in which the avatar is not in the role any longer. And that was more important for them, for the avatar to keep the role than actually, you know, to be responsible for someone's life. Uh, to, be, to be fair, I wouldn't mind if, if they kept the character in the character, but, you know, some sorts of patterns should trigger an intervention of somebody mm -hmm. who's seeing it. I mean, obviously, I mean, if you're talking to a minor and there are talks about an you know, afterlife, I would expect a human to look into it and maybe make an intervention. Well, this is, I think, a very complex case in the sense that, you know, there are questions about the mental state of the boy. Uh, there are many questions about, you know, to what extent the parents and caregivers actually supervised what uh, what he was doing on, online. Uh, but indeed, it is very disturbing, uh, especially because I think there will be more of these sorts of characters in the future, and they're going to be uh, quite persuasive and the fact that they can target uh, young audiences for me is, is is very problematic it is I and mean, my daughter is 10 your daughter is not much older and it, she's she's using whatsapp and on whatsapp in the united states you can actually have conversations with uh, character ai's well it's not character ai but it's a an ai character generated by meta so i think we are already there and there's no regulation you said that there was no oversight but honestly we can only expect parents to have mm. the proper knowledge to even know what to oversee because if my understanding is this mother didn't even know that the boy was actually so much involved with an ai she thought that the, that the boy is playing some games or something like that so we're not at a competence level yet well it is it's generally i think it's a very packed and big problem also because you know these sorts of avatars are probably going to play many different roles in in people's lives and i'm not even talking about teenagers right now i'm, I'm thinking about also you know people who uh, are uh, are uh, already grown-ups but are for instance interacting with uh, dating avatars of all kinds and uh, I do recall the conversation, I believe it was in the Hard Fork po podcast with one of the owners of companies that creates these sort of uh, services. And then he said that uh, actually it's for the avatar to decide, you know, whether uh, to suggest you that you should seek help because, you, you know, you're in a problematic state or not. So he just says, OK, you've decided to start talking to the avatar. Now it's your responsibility to kind of, you know, um, just uh, follow through with that. And if the avatar is not helping you out, you know, in a very professional way, that's still OK. And I do remember that there was a case, I think that was with character AI, that a bot was actually embodying a doctor, you know, and, and presenting uh, itself as a, as a 
a medical professional and then again the answer was it's just a character that's fine but then you rely on it and and these companies essentially say it's it's on you if you rely on them that's your full responsibility and i don't think it's the case obviously I mean, this is like obviously uh very close to disinformation even if if you yeah. put all the responsibility on the receiver uh, and you only reap the benefits of the, the client, customer paying you, I think something's wrong. And to play the devil's advocate, I would say, fine, let's uh, let's say this was very unfortunate, but how many teenagers actually benefited from conversations with character AI? Mm. Maybe there were some, right? As you were depressed and now you're, you're getting better. But we we're, we're not hearing that evidence, yeah, well, though. We, we don't know at all. So yeah. what, what I would argue for, would be first of all of course more oversight more responsibility on the side of the company but also more research because we we don't allow people to take drugs without proper research being taken right mm. uh, life altering interventions like uh, with uh, pharmaceuticals will require very thorough examination experiments with children require very thorough examination why yeah. don't we expect this from ai yeah but you know just as a side note uh... I will say that uh, I, I obviously agree with you, but uh, th there was this one thing that I thought about, which is, you know, and that is again, particularly true for, for kids and teenagers. Um, and that is that quite often what they experience online with other people is bullying, you know, is um, harassment of, of some sorts. And most of these bots are extremely polite and nice to you and always happy to help you, sort of very assistive. and. Um, that's part of a larger problem to me, what we have done with the social media and how AI is replacing all the negative aspects of social media with something that we could still consider a positive conversation. Even the conversations that the boy had with that uh, particular avatar, they were very polite, they were very kind, you know, intimate, I would even say. And uh, people, I think, are, are, are seeking that, they're looking for it. And it's quite sad that they cannot find it, you know, with other people and, and instead they have to look for AI. So I, I kind of understand where that need comes from. Uh, I totally agree. You know, obviously, an illusion will always be better than the reality. And we, we, Really? <laughs> well, if, if you can have, imagine any character you want that will be pleasing you, uh, telling you whatever you want, this has to be better than reality, but we also have to realize that it's not the reality itself. We also do not want probably, I would assume, to, to coach teenagers, coach children, not to uh, see what their life really is, because life is nasty. People will be mean to you, and of course, we don't want people to be mean to you, right? We want to train people to be nice to each other, but I don't think this is achievable by exposing them only to conversation yeah, by, with bots. Yeah, in 100 percent it's it's not, you know. Uh, and yeah, it's it's it, you, you are right and I think it's it's very true uh, that we cannot always rely on this illusion that AI gives you especially that, you know, there is this question to what extent is that um, it can be a meaningful relationship to you but is it real, you know, in all aspects of being real it is a very good question here because I do remember that one of the journalists of, of the New York Times, I believe, uh, spoke to many bots and to one of them he actually announced that his plan is to burn an orphanage that he has built himself, which is obviously a made up story, and he was curious how the bot would react and the bot said, Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that this is your decision, but obviously I understand you. <laughs> so it's not real friendship, really, because your friends would tell you when you're doing bad things. You know, this is what friends are for, to just stop you every now and then. And in this situation, it did not happen. But instead, the bot was, again, super assistive and helpful to you. So, yeah, let's let's not go in that. Yeah, so you know, the final note, I think this is a very interesting point that you raise. And I, I, it just struck me that what Gen AI is actually doing, it's basically providing you with a mirror and pleasantries. While what you said is, is super, it hits the nail right on it, that friends are, well, they are to support you, but also to stop you all the time. And there's this adage that, you know, friends help you move, best friends help, to help you move bodies. But I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think uh, we want AI for that. So uh, ultimately, AI, if it's going to be of any help has to be helping us to be better than we are on our own and for now it's basically uh, yeah. not, not doing that at all yeah definitely realm of illusions <laughs>